Now I want to talk about the lock frame icon. There are three states to the lock frame icon. The first state is that the frame is totally unlocked, meaning that you can change the seat angle, you can change the head angle, head tube length, any kind of dimension you want about the frame you can control, which is how we generally work with bike CAD. If we change the fork from, say, a road fork to something longer like a suspension fork, BikeCAD will change the frame to maintain the desired head angle, effective top tube length, etc. If that's not the behavior we want, we can look into the next state of the lock frame icon. So the next state is to lock the frame. When the frame is locked, we can no longer access the controls for head angle, head tube length, seat tube length, etc. The frame is locked. If we change the fork, just for demonstration purposes, I'll, I'll make a really dramatic change to the length of the fork. And you'll see that having locked the frame, the entire frame has just had to rotate about the rear axle to accommodate this really long fork. In this case, it's as though the saddle clamp and the handlebar clamp were left loose so that the saddle and handlebar could sort of stay at their predefined angle as the entire frame rotated. If I wanted those clamps to be fixed so that as the frame rotates the saddle and handlebar sort of stay the way that we'd expect, uh, well then let's, uh, let's actually just change this back to uh, the original length of fork and watch what happens if we go into the third state. The third state is to not only lock the frame but also lock the handlebar joint and the saddle joint. So as I make the fork really long, again just for demonstration purposes, in the third state the saddle and the handlebar have sort of remained fixed in there by their clamp. So those are the three states of the lock frame icon.